Hey guys, Terry Hay here again from Shock Treatment. Uh, part three of our WP fork installment. We've already had a look at the four CS forks, we've had a look at the Explore forks, and now we're gonna have a look at the exact fork or the, the AR48, which is basically their air fork. So we'll be pulling these down in a minute. Um, they're a very popular fork for us. Um, we do have three other sets of these in the racks, but uh, this is all we could fit on the bench at the time. And we've uh, already got some cartridges out on the bench. So we're going to be pulling those down, having a look at them, and discussing the benefits and the, uh, uh, the non-benefit of the air fork. Now, um, air is nothing new. We had it back in the 70s, and um, they subsequently went away from the complete air fork. Um, in the 80s, we had air assist forks where we'd use air pressure to actually supplement the performance of the coil spring and that didn't work either and so it was very very surprising to see the um, the rise of the air fork from companies like Showa, KYB and uh, WP uh, of recent and so um, uh, it's not without its issues and the reason we've got so many sets in here at the moment is because not everybody's happy with it and so we're going to pull this down we're going to show you some easy solutions some uh, intermediate solutions and of course you've then got wholesale solutions so let's pull it down let's get into it okay so we've pulled the internals out of our forks and we have the air leg and we have the damping leg now uh, this is what we call a separate function fork in that the both legs do uh, completely different tasks the air leg or or effectively the spring leg it, it has a pressurized chamber and that chamber is designed to uh, uh, compensate for the loss of a spring okay so we're using air pressure in terms of uh, our spring force now um, air is not going to work the same as a coiled spring air develops its uh, accumulation of force in a very exponential manner in that it doesn't build in a linear fashion like a coil spring it actually ramps up and one of the problems with the air is that first of all we need to support the combined weight of the bike and the rider and that's just when the bike is static and so um, uh, the air pressure required to do that uh, is significant. And so when we try to push this down to initiate movement, now I'm uh, about 105 kilos or 230 pounds in uh, US speak. But uh, for me pushing down on that, I uh, have to use an enormous amount of force to get that moving. I wouldn't have to do that with a coil spring, meaning that the stored energy in a coiled spring is far, far less and initiating movement is much easier. Plus, whenever we use air pressure, that pressure not only acts as a spring force, but it's also acting on every single surface inside here. So, so basically it's pressurizing the seals as well. So uh, what we'll find is the air pressure increases our seal drag, which is, increases our friction, which you all know friction is a bad thing. We don't want it. And so WP have done their best to Put some really nice coatings on here to try and eliminate a lot of the friction but sadly it still exists and so this fork is uh is stickier than what we would like okay let's get into the damping leg okay so let's have a look at our damping leg now not too uh, many surprises here it's a conventional twin chamber design our compression assembly here uh, we have our compression valve we have our shim stack at the bottom of the compression valve we have our hydraulic piston and we have our pressure spring. Now it is the spring that applies the pressure to the fluid within the chamber and that helps to stabilize the fluid volume. Anytime a fluid is under pressure, it, uh, it really is, its performance is optimized. And so uh, we minimize it, the opportunity for cavitation to occur and uh, it looks after the oil. And as I've said many times, it is the oil which is our damping medium and any mechanism, be it a fork or a shock, is just a, a, a system to actually influence that oil flow and change your oil behavior. With the shim stack, uh, the shim stack is just a whole series of spring steel shims, like round shims, and they effectively form a leaf spring that uh, sits on the back of a piston. And as the oil flows through that piston, the shim stack will bend out of its way and, and in turn apply a spring force to that oil, and that's what will generate the resistance. Okay, we've had a look at the compression assembly. Let's have a look at the, um, the mid-valve assembly or the rebound assembly. Okay, on the end of the stamper rod, we have uh, our rebound mid-valve piston. The rebound is closest to the nut. 
the mid valve is uh, below that piston and the mid valve is designed to effectively offer another element of compression damping. Now it is very very important in order to maintain uh, optimum performance from this, uh, from this fork assembly is that we never have the mid valve dominate the base valve. And uh, one of the things, that we, an area where we get the greatest gain with this particular fork is that the mid valve in this case is a solid assembly. Okay, there's no room to generate any float from this, uh, this particular setup. Normally, say on traditional uh, valve assemblies, we'll have a cup washer and we'll have a little rebate here, we'll have a little spring and it allows us to generate a bit of float. And the benefit of that float is that it promotes instant movement of the fluid to the back of this piston ready for the rebound stroke, which is it's, uh, massively important. Okay, so what we do with uh, this particular valve, you can see that there is no rebate there. What we'll do is we'll take this, put it on the lathe and we'll machine a little one millimeter rebate and we'll put a proper cup washer and uh, proper float assembly on there. That's not an expensive upgrade. It adds about $20 to the job and um, uh, creates a you know, two, $300 effect. The other alternative is if you want, you can go and uh, buy aftermarket pistons that perhaps already have that rebate in them. Uh, you can get uh, both mid valve and uh, compression assemblies for uh, these forks from companies like Racetech um, and they work quite well, but you do pay a lot more money for them, of course. If we're looking at the economical upgrade, that's a modification I highly recommend, revalving to suit the rider's requirements. Now, if you're going to be doing something yourself to these forks, um, bear in mind that this is a separate function fork, and so this really needs a damping outcome that will manage the damping performance for both legs. Okay, so the valving of this needs to be twice as stiff as a traditional setup. And so whether you're using a separate function fork or a traditional two fork system, I really don't care. You know, like um, uh, even though there's a spring in one leg damping in the other, you've got a solid triple clamp assembly and a solid axle assembly, which keeps everything in line. And whilst, you know, some people's heads battle with the fact that, oh, the, it's got a torsional effect and we're gonna have different, different attitudes from both legs. Well, it's, it may be there, but it's small and it's really not enough to worry about. So. This system can work well. Uh, once we've got the compression assembly sorted, we're going to move to the, uh, the spring leg and that's where we're going to get a great gain. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so let's look at the spring leg now. Okay, um, as I said, air is not the ideal spring mechanism and every other manufacturer has so far abandoned it. WP is still persisting with it. Its uh, initial movement, um, you know, the force to overcome the initial movement is, is significant, so really messes with our small bump compliance. And the seal drag that we get from this hampers our uh, ability to develop grip. And um, the most economical upgrade is simply to put a spring conversion kit in there. The spring conversion kits, there are several out there, um, both from international and national manufacturers. Um, we've actually had our own made up. This was uh, one of ours here, and the reason that we had that made was we're trying to get low friction in our system, and so we've had this made out of 6061 T6 grade aircraft uh, aluminium, and uh, basically we've had it hard anodized, so it's super slippery, and we've had a um, uh, had that anodizing buff, so that we get a nice finish. Everything moves as slick as possible. Uh, we've We've eliminated unnecessary uh, uh, preload adjusters on the top of the fork and we've actually given you the ability to adjust preload with this step mechanism inside here. And so generally once pre preload has been set, people don't touch it anyway. So I'd rather put the money into coatings and give you an effect that you'll feel every time you hit a bump as opposed to a, uh, a preload adjuster you, you may never use. The fork springs, uh, we have WP's own spring manufacturer make the springs for us. Very, very high quality spring. They work incredibly well. Now here's just some parts that I've put together of one of our mechanisms. And this, uh, this mechanism, as I said, it's super slippery. So, so when we pull this apart, what we'll find in here is just a, a guide bush. Has no damping mechanism in, in it whatsoever. There's no need for it to create damping. The other leg does the, 
told you it was slick. The other, the other leg does all our damping for us. And if we want to make this even slippery, because the, there is no damping requirement from this, we simply put motor oil in this side of the leg. Okay, motor oil is a lot slipperier than fork oil. And you'll be amazed how big a difference you'll notice just by switching from fork oil to motor oil in your, um, in your spring leg. And even if you're going to continue with the air, you know, you can drop motor oil into this side instead of using fork oil and it will make it slick and it will, uh, it will get rid of a lot of that friction. But, you know, nowhere near the level that you'll get from this kit. So just to highlight the benefits of this system, every time you put this in, you are going to have a friction reduction. You are going to have a better force accumulation through the spring. Makes for a, a more comfortable, less tiring, uh, more predictable ride. And uh, the, you know, your rider's going to have greater confidence in the front wheel, and that's the secret to speed. Anytime you can improve the confidence in that front wheel, you'll have a rider that's not only happier, but they'll be going quicker. If you want to go beyond this, there are certainly aftermarket cartridge options that you can look at. Um, WP have their 6500 cartridge, which is a works version of, um, uh, of their cartridges. They have uh, the Del Soggio Sphere cartridge, which is you know, it's an all-conquering cartridge. It's probably the best feeling one out there at the moment. The Olin's TTX cartridges, or some people are putting the KYB stock cartridges into these forks. You're spending the same money on the KYB as, as you are on the better items. So I would, uh, I would recommend you go to, for the work setup if you're gonna go that route, you know, but um, that's a big investment, but you're only investing in your own pleasure. So um, if you can't spend money on yourself, who can you spend it on? Okay, thank you.